Hello there, this being God's Obedient Servant channel again. Uh, today, we're going into chapter 24 of Exodus. Uh, if you're new to this, this is a Bible study course. I study out of the King James Bible. Um, so, you can follow along with one or follow along with the Bible you do have. Most of them are pretty close. Some of them are a little different. But... Uh, I like this one because in some other Bibles I've found passages and stuff in it that kind of almost change the meaning of the passage. So um, I stick with this one. <laughs> this one built this country of America. God blessed this country as it was being built. So I do, uh, to, in my heart, God approves of this version. So. Uh, anyways, uh, go ahead and jump right on in here. This is a short chapter. I only got 18 verses, but the next chapter is kind of long, so I wasn't going to be able to blend them. So this will be a short teaching. Um, but yeah, as I said, like we already went through some of the rules and regulations and stuff that's coming up that made the Ten Commandments. Now this is the part where... Uh, Moses is fixing to, you know, get to things together to go up to the mount for God to create the two tablets. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right on in here. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses's Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said we will do. So if you go back to chapter 23, all those rules and everything else, here's the mass of the people saying we're going to obey this. And you have to pay close attention to that because they fail this very shortly <laughs> after promising to obey. Now, the moral of this story is showing that uh, you're going to fail. You're not going to be no perfect person and God doesn't expect you to. But what he does expect you to is to try. And if you do fall short or, you know, go against God's word... You're supposed to be sorry, truly sorry in your heart that you did so and repent from it and try to do it no more. Strongholds are something God understands. A stronghold is like a, an, a severe addiction, like someone addicted to cigarettes, heroin, meth, stuff like that. That's a stronghold. Um, the, the normal stuff to repent from uh, would be uh, sleeping around, treating your spouse like garbage, being mean to your kids. Those are not really addictions. Uh, you know, like people that are alcoholics, that's a stronghold. People that drink for fun, that's not a stronghold, and God expects you to stop doing that. Because in the Bible, you'll later see where God says that you should stay, you should do your best that you should always try to be of sound mind, which means you should stay it says stay away from strong drink to be, I think it says stay away from strong drink to be of sound mind because now as you drink, you're going to get loopy. That's just the way it is. That's what it does to you. And so God says the best way to avoid that is to stay away from it. Now, is drinking a sin? No, it's not a sin unless you're purposely drinking to get drunk then it's more of the sinful areas. Um, another one is like tattoos, you know, and piercings and everything else. Uh, the Bible says that, you know, you should stay, you're to stay away from worldly things. Tattoos is a worldly thing. Uh, and also, if you got the Lord in you, and if, uh, if the Holy Spirit resides in you, then part of Jesus, you know, you got Jesus in your heart, then your body is his temple. And really, you know, the Bible says you're supposed to take care of the temple, which also means don't be putting graffiti all over it. 
Um, everyone's got their excuses on, well, this is my child's birthday, and this butterfly represents them, and blah, 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 blah. Like, if you don't know your child's birthday and you need a stamp inside your skin to remind you, I would say get a notepad and a little calendar, something like that, you know, write it down, uh, paint it on the wall of your house, something. But, you know, as I said, everybody's got excuses for stuff like that. But sim simple fact is tattoos are primarily there to impress other people. That's all they're for. You know, and unless you've got, like, you know... Uh, the Jewish people during the uh, Holocaust, they were tattooed to be numbered. That was a number for them. And it was put in their skin so it's like, you know, they couldn't deny who they were. You know, that was first done against their will. And, you know, it's when it's done against your will, it's a totally different thing. It's like it's whatever you decide to do, not what somebody decided to do for you. But then it's like whatever you decide to do. But anyways, continue on here, uh, verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar unto the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood and sprinkled uh, sprinkled on the altar and he took the book of the covenant and read and read in the audience of the people and they said all that the lord hath said we will do and be obedient and moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant which the lord hath made with you concerning all these words so, this is kind of where you get the blood brother stuff from, and this, that, and the other, but, you know. So now these people have been, you know, covered with the blood of the dead to, uh, it's, uh, their promise to God, you know. It's like the seal, sealing their promise to God. Verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God, and did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And of course you can tell this is the end of this teaching. But remember 40 days, 40 nights. This is a very strong teaching because later on in New Testament you know that Jesus uh did not eat or drink for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted for the Lord. So, there's teachings in Old Testaments that lead to the New Testament. And Jesus always taught from the Old Testament. So a lot of people think that, well, we're now in the New Testament, so we don't have to obey nothing out of Old Testament. It says that is not so. There's most of it we still have to obey. 
there's actually very few of it that we no longer have to obey. And that's primarily because it was for the Israelites specific and not for the rest of mankind. So, anyways, I said, that's the end of the study here. It's a short one. And so I'm just going to go ahead and end this one here. Get started uh, doing everything I need to start the next one, uh, chapter 25. So, I hope you all have a great week. Um... And so, <laughs> uh, good night and goodbye.